God bless you, family. Happy Friday. Looking at a few headlines this morning, I noticed a train derailed just northwest of Atlanta, uh, spilling thousands of gallons of diesel. Uh, looked like some of it was on fire. You know, for a long time with all these train derailments we've been hearing the last year, you know, my sense has been, you know, we're already under attack, like we are invaded. Um, all these things are happening, and like these aren't, this isn't the normal course of things. Um, that's on my radar, that uh, those things continue, and of course will ramp up uh, into the point of the tribulation where it will be, uh, people will be wishing that that's all they had to deal with. And some of you guys may have heard, there was also a 7.2 massive earthquake underwater off the southern tip of uh, Philippines, Santos City or something like that. I saw a video clip, you guys may have seen it. Uh, it was a mall, stuff was shaking, falling. And when I see that, it's just, for me, it's more indication the Lord is shaking this earth. <clears throat> trying to get people's attention. We pray and we hope some people will scratch their head and, and start to ask questions. And perhaps we can be the recipients of those questions to step in and say, well, you know what? And we can point them to the scriptures. Uh, Bible prophecy can help kind of tie a lot of this stuff together. Or however the Lord has wired you guys in your skill set, um, your gifts, you can uh, bless people by, by sharing that, right? One thing I wanted to focus on today, um, apart from just those observations I mentioned, is when it comes to the tribulation, I was becoming clearer and clearer as I study the scriptures, as I study Revelation, that the tribulation is such a period for, obviously, well, I mean, to me, exclusively focusing, the Lord focusing his attention on Israel and the unbelieving world. And it's very... Uh, it's made clear that those two parties of people, I believe in scripture, um, in Daniel, uh, it'll be that time of Jacob's sorrow, that's Israel. And then a few scriptures I'm gonna provide to you that will also <clears throat> show how it's, you know, not so much focusing on Israel. I've spoken about that previous, and some of you guys may have heard, um, you know, teachings and, and are familiar with those scriptures but on the language of showing that it's the unbelieving world that is mentioned throughout Revelation, uh, throughout the tribulation. So, in the first three chapters of Revelation, church is mentioned, what is it, 19, 20, 21 times? Uh, right by name, the Lord is, is very clear. And dealing with the time of the end, you know how gracious that the Lord is like, he's gonna let us know everything. Now he's letting the church know, he's speaking to seven different churches, and he's equipping us with understanding and knowledge. And uh, he's saying, you're doing good at certain things. And other things, he's saying, watch these areas. And for uh, two other churches, he's saying, you're doing good and there's no corrective language. And we pray we would be of those. Uh, Church of Philadelphia being one of those. But the, some of the scriptures that are pointing out, you know, not the church and not Israel, but the Gentile nations, what is called the inhabitants of the earth. The inhabitants of the earth. Now when you contrast that with a time of Jacob's sorrow or Israel, Israel is always Israel. It was always referred to as God's people. Um, there's even analogy type language, you know, about in Hosea, like unfaithful wife. I mean, but by and large, Israel is often, uh, it's very clear when the Lord is addressing my people. Um, my inheritance, all, all such things, right? And the church and the believers, it's always the body of Christ, uh, the church, the believers, the brethren. It's never the inhabitants of the earth. That's very disconnected, right? And that would make sense because the unbelieving world, they're not converted yet. They're fallen. They're not born again. They're not children of God. Their father is the devil. So it makes sense that the language in the word of God is saying these are the inhabitants of the earth. All right, so this audience of the tribulation being, again, Israel and the Gentile nations. Let's start with Revelation 6, 10. They called out in a loud, and sorry, this context is, you know, at this point, this is within 
um, the, the wrath, the judgments. Revelation 6.10, They called out in a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? So these are those who have come to faith on Jesus in the tribulation, who have been martyred and killed, and uh, they're asking the Lord, how much longer, Lord, until you avenge us from those, those devils on the earth, the inhabitants of the earth, right? All right, there we go. There's a little wink right there. Of what kind of people are here on earth? It's not the church. It's not Israel. It's the inhabitants of the earth. Revelation 8, 13 as well. As I watched, I heard an, an eagle. This is a, this is a, I like the King James. It says an angel. It's not an eagle. But as I, and I'm reading from a, a book that I had read. As I watched, I heard an angel that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. This is during further uh, judgment portion of the tribulation. So you see that language, the inhabitants of the earth. In scripture, every word is purposeful and meaningful, and the Lord wants us to be hearing and understanding these inhabitants of the earth and understand like there's no way that's us right so we don't have to be worried thinking oh my gosh three more woes and these ones were just terrible you know no it's, praise god we don't have to deal with any of that it's been bad enough revelation 11 10 the inhabitants of the earth and you guys can check out these scriptures uh, later um, if you don't have your bible right now i encourage you to do that um, so you can see with your own eyes and just and this can really sear in the inhabitants of the earth, Revelation 11.10, will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. Context here is when the two witnesses are killed by the Antichrist, they're dead bodies, they don't even bury them because they hate them, these inhabitants of the earth, because they're preaching Jesus. Um, and... Yeah, these, these are not these people, these inhabitants of the earth are not us. We wouldn't be uh, hating the, the two witnesses who are proclaiming Jesus and the gospel, right? Does that make sense? Um, Revelation 13, 8. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. That's definitely not us. And you know, when I was early in my faith, I probably had some fear thinking like, you know, oh my gosh, I got to watch out for so many things and I don't want to worship the beast. We won't. We'll be up in glory. The inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been written in the book of life, right? Further evidence. We are in the, book, the Lamb's book of life. Be belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. Revelation 13, 12. He exercised all the authority of the first beast on his behalf, talking about the false prophet, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. More evidence. Don't be afraid. You're going to be in there and you're going to accidentally take this mark and you're accidentally going to worship the beast. You're not an inhabitant of the earth if you believe on Jesus and if you've been converted. This is so awesome. Uh, Revelation 13, 14. Because of the signs he was given to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth ordered them to set up an image and honor the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. So we don't have to worry about being deceived and being ordered to do such uh, blasphemous things. Revelation 17, 1 to 2. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her the kings of the earth committed adultery and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. So we don't have to worry. We're not going to get intermingled. Come ye out of them. Scripture speaks of, you know, we're separate. We're holy. We're different. Uh, we're distinct. We're not going to be commingling, um, especially during the tribulation, because we're not even in it. This language is for the inhabitants of the earth. Finally, Revelation 17, verse 8 the beast which you saw once was, now is not, and will come up out of the abyss and go to his destruction. The inhabitants of the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast because he once was, now is not, and yet will <clears throat> come. 
Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have no astonishment. We'll be, we will not be in awe. Being like, whoa, look at, look at this thing. He, he was, he is not, and now he is. Like, um, yeah, we'll come. Again, this language is very purposeful. It's very helpful. I believe the Lord gives us such winks throughout Scripture. So I pray we may all be more and more aware of these things. And remember, before you read Scripture each time, ask for godly wisdom and discernment and understanding. And I also throw in there, I said, Lord, also give me great communion with you. And sometimes I'll be moved to saying great healing and fellowship with you. Um, in your word, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. And then I get right into reading my Scripture with my pen, my uh, highlighter in hand, ready to interact with my word and mark up things that strike me and they kind of sear into my, my remembrance. And then when I'm talking to people or I hear something or I'm speaking to you guys, these scriptures come to me and I can sometimes remember they're on the lower left side of this page. I went with red or I was doing stars or I underlined, you know what I mean? All right, so there's, there's that, guys. No language of church. We're not in there, but they are the inhabitants of the earth, and there is Israel, and there's a time of Jacob's sorrow. Um, you know, Jesus even speaks about Israel, about when you see the abomination of desolation, those who are in Judea, this is the Jews, go flee. So we hear so much language, so many winks in Scripture about Israel and about the inhabitants of the earth explicitly by this language I just fleshed out during the 70th week of Daniel, known as the Tribulation, the last seven years of human history, a walking, real nightmare on earth, and then um, then this earth is done as we know it. So be encouraged. Uh, it's freaky stuff if you're an inhabitant of the earth or an unbelieving Jew. You'll go into the Tribulation and you may get salvation, but you may not. So I exhort you guys watching, if anybody's watching and you don't know King Jesus, uh, and, and if you're like, I'm not really into religion or, you know, even Christianity or all the church, um, it's not about, um, it's not about any of those things. It's about Jesus. It's about God who took on flesh and he came to earth and he, he needed to be a sacrifice for sin, something that no man can do by their works to get in the presence of God. God himself had to do it in a humble, putting off his glory and taking on our, our humble likeness of flesh to uh, offer himself as a sacrifice, there needed to be blood, an atonement of blood for the, for the forgiveness of sins, for the sacrifice. So by doing that, uh, he broke the curse of sin and death so you can go to glory. So today, if you don't know Jesus, read some scripture so you might get near to the Holy Spirit. He'll swoop in and get near to you. He'll enlighten you, he'll open your mind, he'll give you the gift to believe that Jesus is God that there's a sin problem, you're infected with it, Jesus is the only antidote. What he did was sufficient. Now, as you put your chips on Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me my sins, I believe in you, fill me and make me yours, a conversion happens. You may feel it at that moment, you may not, but your life will change, you'll have a different experience with sin, and uh, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to just know what other people will mention too, you're different. It's a great thing because, uh, right, we can all be so ugly and sinful. And even once you're saved and converted, we can still slip. But you will no longer walk in sin. Your walk will be in holiness after Christ Jesus. And I desire that for everybody watching. Um, and for the brethren, you guys who are already saved, I pray I encourage you with these words. Anyone watching who is not saved yet, I pray you might heed my words today. Happy Friday once again, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching my video. Please hit thumbs up on it and share my video. I would appreciate it. God willing, I'll see you next time. God bless you.